Welcome everyone. It's, um, I'm Bill Collistead with the Iowa Developmental Disability Council and this is Amy Campbell, our eyes and ears at the Capitol and we're back hopefully for another round of our weekly chats. And this week we're wrapping up what they call funnel week. So that means all those bills that they've been working on so relentlessly since the beginning of the legislation, if they, if they didn't make it out of this um, week, they're going to have a tough time moving forward. So we're going to talk about what's happening this week. We're going to talk a little bit about what bills made it out and what bills um, died at this point. And so we'll try to give you some information and hopefully um, will inform you as a advocate. Um, so the first one that I was thinking about is the House passed a tax cut bill. And we do know that um, three Democrats did vote for this and so it, it wasn't just by party line um, to have the tax um, bill cut. It is in the Senate Ways and Means Committee now, and what it would do it would basically cut your state income taxes. We know that's, that that cut will be $104 million less for the um, government to spend, but by 2028, the total accumulation would be around $1.6 million. Billion. Sorry, yes, thank you. <laughs> $1.6 billion by 2028. Um, the Senate will debate their tax plan next week. The tax cut is much bigger than what the House was, they're, they're proposing a $200 million cut, which would be about $2.1 billion by 2028. And then, so, so that's the tax cut. Going forward, the Senate also proposed um, their budget for the total amount of spent, and that, that, that's very similar. Their, their budget targets for next year, which is very similar to what the governor had put forward, and that's $8.2 billion for next year. And that, it is an increase, about 0.9%, which is to about the tune of $77 million. That does include, this is an exciting piece, it does include more money promised to regional mental health and disability services, which is an extra $71.2 million. Um, we also know, so these, I'm going through quite a few of these, but we also know the governor signed a school bill which would increase funding for schools by 2.5% or $159 million. And then the governor also announced that the process for giving $1,000 bonuses to every teacher, police officer, prison workers, and child care workers, um, the bonus will start going out in the spring. And those are for work that's really important that's being done. So that's kind of what's happening this week. Did I miss anything? No, no, no uh, bonuses for disability project no, managers no, or no, anything? No bonuses for public policy uh, managers. It. Maybe next year. <laughs> Well, and I, I would assume there's a lot of people wondering why some of the direct service providers might not be in that in that list. I've heard some talk up at the Capitol that maybe people working in nursing homes and in residential care facilities are working in somebody's home providing services should should be able to have some of those bonuses as well. So that'll be interesting to see when that all starts happening, uh, how far that can, can go out because I bet I bet at $1,000 a person, that's probably a lot of money. Sure. But you're right. It's It was funnel week. We're actually fresh from the Capitol, <laughs> um, where the last committees have just met and have finished up their work on the committee level. Um, this is the week. This is the day all of the bills had to get out of their first committee. So if it, they didn't make it, they didn't make the cut, they're done. They're done for the year. Um, and so we will have our bill tracker updated. Um, and it's updated now. We moved everything that didn't make it to the inactive list, so you can still see them if you want to, um, but they are, are um, off the active list um, as of today. So um, I don't know how many bills that is that got um, uh, cut this, this week, but we'll have to take a look and see how many. It, it's definitely at least half of them. We know they started out with over 300, so yeah. Just this year. narrowing them yeah. down, yep. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the things that did survive. And um, there's a couple of exciting things. This year, the House really had, and Senate both agreed on, a, on trying to in increase access to mental health services. And so one of the, a lot of the, the bills that they passed out would increase the number of psychiatric beds in the state, in, increase the number of psychiatric residencies, so those places that the psychiatrists go or the nurse practitioners go to get experience. Um, uh, they would increase the number of residencies. Um, they're going to do some changes to the rates so that the more complex cases get paid a little bit more. Um, they're looking at um, some loan repayment programs for mental health professionals. Right now, all the only 
um, psychiatric ARMPs and psychiatrists have access to those repayment mm -hmm. programs. So this would expand the number of therapists and people that could receive that. Um, we talked a lot about the service animals um, and the bills that balance the service animals, uh, people that have service animals and the landlord's rights. And a bill, some bills did advance, um, but they're still working on them. So we don't have a lot of new things to report on that. And the mental health and disability services regions um, had been concerned about not being able to have enough um, money in reserve to pay bills um, because of the law that passed last year. So there was a bill that increased their ability, um, doubled the amount of money that they can keep in reserve to, from 5% to 10%. Um, a lot, there was one bill on public assistance program integrity that passed. Um, there were a lot of them that were out there, but one passed and it's a pretty small bill that just would require somebody to set up kind of a identity mm -hmm. verification system when they first start receiving services. So something kind of like you do with a bank where you'd have to have a pin number or something mm -hmm. to be able to access that. But they've done it in a way that you don't have to have a computer. So that, that's, that was a good change. Um, a bill that updated the definition of autism um, passed. It was an Autism Speaks priority. Um, and um, we talked last week about um, a special education task force that actually passed the Senate already and is in the House, so it's on its way um, to becoming law. And then another one that just passed today was a hearing aid program for kids um, that um, had started off requiring insurers to pay for hearing aids for children. Um, it, I found out in, this, um, in the subcommittee meetings that insurers think that's cosmetic. The hearing aids are cosmetic. Yes, that they're not necessary, medically necessary, which everybody knows that it, children with developing language skills, that's really important. And they have to change them every three to four years. And I guess they cost about $2,500 to $5,000 each time. So they're gonna set up a program to help pay for those um, programs. Um, instead of requiring insurers, they'll, have, they'll put some state money into it. Um, there's also a guardianship bill still out there from last year. Um, we're watching that. We've heard some people talking about it recently, so we'll keep an eye on that. And the last one I wanted to bring up came up just this week. A new bill was introduced, a big election bill. A lot of it is cleanup stuff, but there is one section in there that requires somebody voting absentee to put a voter verification number on it or their driver's license number. So those people that don't have a a uh, driver's license may not know what their voter verification number is, and then unless you put it on that uh, envelope and sign it, uh, then you might not have your ballot ca counted. So that's, that's a little bit of a concern for a lot of people, um, and the fact that the bill just came up on Monday and you're voting on it on Wednesday. So that's a little bit concerning, but a lot of bills did kind of move forward in this last That's uh, a long deadline. list. So the bills that died, let's talk about, there was a few bills around elections or some details in the election bills, um, some that would extend the absentee ballot um, voting, that, that died. We also know last week we, gave, we, we spoke about the court hearing um, bill that would require masks be worn to protect children with disabilities. There was a bill that proposed that there would be ways to make an exception um, that would allow them to to not allow people to wear masks or not to have them have to wear masks. And we know that died, so that we see that as a positive. Um, there's a, there were some bills that would have made it a lot harder to receive public assistance, and those died as well. And then we know that there was some bills about the vaccine mask and stuff that died. Um, there is one bill that did survive around that. We'll make sure to highlight that so people can continue to follow that. Yeah, so, I think that bill's not going to make it, but I know that there was a pretty long four-hour public hearing on it, and they heard a lot from a lot of outside people from outside expert, of the state. Yeah. So um, I, I, I don't think that has much of a future, but we will definitely put that in our bill tracker and make sure that people know what it does. So let's kind of set the table for the next few weeks here. So we know that bills to get out of chamber for action have to happen by March 18th. Um, next week or over the next few weeks, you can watch any floor debate. So as they come out of committee, they have to go to floor and debate. Um, you can watch it at www.legis.iowa.gov. Um, 
Yeah, we'll put that on the uh, screen here for you. You can watch all live debate. You can watch it. They tape it every day, so you can watch the taped versions of it too on that website. And the, um, the that's the next thing that has to happen is they have to get off out of the one chamber and over into committee in the other chamber because we know that we just have a month now. You said March 18th. Yep. Yeah, you just have a month now to get it out of the other committee before they the next deadline hits. So that's that's going to go pretty fast. So tell me about that last part. So the tax and budget and bills. Tell me about that. So tax and uh, tax bills, which we sometimes hear ways and means. Mm -hmm. That's the committee that tax bills go through, and appropriations bills. So budget bills go through the appropriations um, committee. Those bills can be debated any time. They don't, they don't have to get through a committee by a certain amount of time. They can bring them up at any time. They can introduce them at any time. Um, and so that's because usually legislators wait till the end of session to figure out the budget and taxes. Sure, that makes sense. So just thinking, kind of resetting that table really quick. We had a bunch of bills that are still alive. We've, had, we've listed some that did, did die this year in session. So you want to follow the bills that, like you said, they come out of the House and they go into Senate committees or they come out of the Senate bills and then they go to the House committees for them to work through them and then they start to get debated on the floor, so follow that. Um, and then, of course, some of the financial information, will, like you said, those could be brought up going forward. So Yeah, if you think of it like a big funnel, because that's what they call yep. this deadline, the funnel, the funnel looks like that, you know? All these bills get thrown in and you just hit the first deadline, so there's a fewer amount coming out at the end and then now we've got a smaller set of bills that we're starting with next week, this week, and that's going to start to go through the next funnel, which is March 18th. So a fewer number are going to make it through that. So this is the big time where they got to get out of one, one chamber, the House or the Senate, whole commit, the group has to vote on it. They got to get out of committee on the other side. So it's a lot of work in a three week period, four week period of time. So take a breath this weekend, Amy, and, and, and get ready to come back on Monday and start to work, or Tuesday, and start to work on some of these. And we'll provide as much information each week on what's happening and what we see. And we have a capital chat coming up soon, for, so look for information on that. Yep. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, say goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Bill. Good to see you. <laughs>